Defining inventory structure. So inventory structure comes at the bottommost layer of your enterprise structure. Specifically, looking at our examples, you can see that inventory structure starts from here, uh, from the distribution center, which consists of the distribution centers, the warehouses within distribution centers, then the products. It could also contain locators and serial number for the products. The locators and serial number for the products are as such not called as part of enterprise structure, but they are called as part of your inventory structure. Now the place you define your distribution center and warehouse is pretty much same as the form I've shown you for defining your op operating unit. But the place where you define your products is different. Similarly, you separately define your inventory locators and serial control separately within inventory module. So let me quickly show you where all it takes place. So going back to inventory, the navigation is same for defining a inventory distribution center and warehouse. A distribution center can be a logical entity or it could be a physical entity. Warehouses are most of the time physical entities. Okay, so go to setup, organization, organizations, hit the open button and then start by new. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick an existing one. Let's say Dallas Manufacturing Inventory Organization. Hit the find button and here the process is same. So you start by typing the name and then you type what kind of an organization it is. So it is a plant. Then you start the validity dates. Then you associate a location. Again, location is something which is defined here. Okay. Once you have defined the location, you can attach it over here. And then the most important thing is the parameters. The system recognizes that this inventory, this organization is an inventory organization by this parameter called as inventory organization. So once you have attached that, you've got to save the record and then go to others and choose the inventory parameter information. So it contains basically further information that you can associate. So you've got to start with accounting information, which is where you specify details of your ledger, legal entity and operating unit to which this inventory organization is associated with. So you can see that in our case, you know, it's exactly the same structure. So here you've got the legal entity, then you've got the ledger, then you've got the operating unit. And within that, we've got the inventory organization or distribution center slash warehouse. So that's how the association is made. So once you have defined that, you save the record, come out, go back to others, and then you go to inventory information, which is where you can give additional information about this inventory organization. There are lots of information that goes into an inventory organization parameters. Okay, you can see that over here and you can indicate the most important is this inventory master organization. Inventory master organization is a logical organization within Oracle applications within which you store your item definition. So it simply lets you control the versioning of items and then you define separate organizations for your physical warehouses. So it's mainly a logical organization for storing your item definition. Item definition is something like I'm referring to the products and services which will have unique codes that you define in your system. That's what I'm referring to as item definition. So each of the item you define it separately which will have associated parameters and then you indicate that it belongs to this inventory organization and then once you have defined that then the next step would be to assign that item to all the warehouses wherein it can be potentially transacted. Let's say if I have defined laptop as an item and I say that the laptop can be transacted only in Auckland and Wellington, but it should not be transacted in Sydney. So after you have defined the laptop, you go to its definition for 
assigning the organization and only assign to these two organization and do not assign to other inventory organizations such as Sydney or the Shenzhen or Indian operations. So that way you are restricting your transaction for the item to only two inventory organizations. So let's go back and check how it works. So that's where you provide your inventory item information, all the associated details of your items. This is the place you specify whether this item is lot controlled or scale controlled. And if the answer is yes, then you specify your serial control starting number. And then you've got to also perform a number of additional setups pertaining to your serial number control. Okay, so there are a lot more details goes into that. So I'm going to skip that at the moment because it will be too much and it may bounce off at the moment. But you would also see a number of accounting information that goes in. Those accounts gets defaulted on the transactions when you perform within this particular inventory organization. Okay, so once you have defined your master inventory organization, then you have got to define your child inventory organization to the ones which will actually have your transactional information. Okay, so I'm going to come out of this. And the next step is after you have defined your item master and your child inventory organization for transactions, then the next step is to define the item themselves. So which is where you go to items and master items form and you start defining item over here. So as soon as you start this, it will ask you for a for you to choose an organization. So let's say we choose vision operations as our organization, which is the item master as well. And then you start by giving the item number, the description. So let's pull up an existing item let's say something starting with A, there would be many, many. So let's say this desktop, hit the find button. So within the item definition, you specify a number of things in relation to different modules. So all these refers to settings for this item for different modules in relation to the transactions. So the settings that you make over here will determine the item behavior when you're going to transact that item. So let's say if you say that this item is not stockable, when do you say that you say that when this particular item is not a product but a service. A service can't be stocked but it can be transacted, right? Similarly, there are a lot of other settings such as BOM, whether this item belongs to a BOM, then you specify BOM related properties. Then if it's an asset, you specify asset related properties. The costing, so if this item has got an associated cost, then it is cost enabled, it will have an inventory asset value. And then when you sell this item, it will hit a cost of goods sold account. So what is that account you specify over here? Similarly, you specify details for your purchasing, receiving, order management, MRP, if you are doing planning and invoicing. If you, obviously, if you sell this item, that will be invoicing in account receivables module. So these settings, will come into picture. So a lot of these things will have to be made and to make it easy for these settings, you define something called as item types and item templates. And when you apply that, most of these values will get defaulted automatically. For example, you can define a template called as computers. And while you're defining new item for computers, you can apply that template and all the values will get defaulted automatically. So you don't have to go into individual sections and update the values. So that will save a considerable time. And that's how it is done in real implementations. Anyway, once you are done defining your item, then the next step is assigning it to the inventory organization. Remember, I was 
explaining you the scenario that you have defined an item you would like to restrict to only certain organization and not for all organization for its transactions so that's how you restrict you go to tools and then you go to organization assignments and within where you specify under which organization this particular item can be transacted and if you do not want to have it transacted let's say in Singapore distribution center you uncheck it and then you can save that record and when you try to transact in this distribution center the system would not allow in fact the system would not show this item in Singapore distribution center at all so that's how you go about defining your item and assigning it to inventory organization as far as your transactional inventory structure goes Thank you.